Lord, welcome. How many of you are wet? Well, quite a few of us. How many of you had a challenging time getting ready for service? <laughs> Some of you especially, especially those of you in the cabins. Uh, thank you for being patient, working with us. Uh, as I understand it, it's an Appalachian Power Company issue. Uh, one of their fuses or whatever it's called uh, popped. And so we are working, pressing forward in that to get things resolved. My hope is by the end of service, but I can, can't make any promises, but we're going to work at it, God being our helper. And uh, so thank you. And then already, thank you for those of us who are accommodating, those of you who are accommodating, trying to help us with space issues this evening. I'm glad to have a space problem. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm grateful for that. That, that. that means more people... Uh, more people to receive help from the Lord and go forward in God. So we're going to get started with this pre-service, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing uh, from the Word of God through some people of God, as they have sought intentionally uh, to raise a family for God's kingdom and God's glory. So I want us to begin with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for your Word. I thank you, Lord, that it guides us and instructs us it leads us forward in the path of righteousness. Lord, family was your idea. And what a great idea. Lord, what, what a beautiful, foundational building block of society and of this world. And Lord, I'm praying that, Lord, godly families would be the result of Camp Victory and would be the result of, Lord, this session this evening. Help us to open our ears, open our hearts, and then be both hearers and and doers of your word, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, the word of God tells us in two different places, at least, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, and then the book of Titus chapter 2. I won't read the passages, but I just say this. Godly men are to intentionally transfer truth and experience to younger men. It's a great place to say amen, even though we've not done a very good job of it sometimes, all right? We are supposed to be on purpose passing along what we have learned in the Lord, in the Lord to those younger than us. And then Titus chapter 2 uh, tells the ladies that they are, you older ladies, whoever that is here, uh, you are to be pouring into other younger ladies, now, now, I want to emphasize something here. One thing I've learned, and I'm still learning, I have much to learn still here. I've learned that being a mentor does not mean you have everything figured out. You're just sharing with those the things that God has helped you to figure out, and you're still on a learning process as well. I know the Dickinsons feel that way about it. We're going to have them come as soon as we sing. The family that prays together stays together. Join me if you know it. The family that prays together, stays together, lives together, loves together, smiles every mile the way home. God watches them, walks with them, comforts and talks with them, bless. Do it cheerfully, do it humbly, and we do it without grumbling, thank the Lord. The real Christian home. The family that prays together, stays together, lives together, loves together, smiles every mile the way home. God watches them, walks with them, comforts and talks with them, blessing the real Christian home. I want that kind of home. Amen. Dickinson's are coming, and if we have to, some of this may spill over into tomorrow evening. It is a privilege to be here with you all. all is right? it, though? It's on. All right. So we just want to simply share... We don't have the answers. We're still asking lots of questions. The older I get, the more questions I have. But we do want to share some biblical tips for raising a holy family or godly family. And I know that 
you all could do the same as well, but we want to share, see some biblical principles and probably just share some personal, maybe a few personal anecdotes. Maybe some influences you wish you could have taken out of your children's life. Sometimes you can't take them out. Something that happens. Um, but remember that God is faithful and God does the impossible through prayer. Praise the Lord. Now, if you were to build a house, you would, you would uh, need to learn how to create a foundation. If I just picked one of you randomly out of here that, to build me a house, so I'm going to pay you well, which I could, build me a nice house, and you would have to go and research. And, and uh, if it was up to, all up to you, you couldn't just hire people to do it for you. You would have to research how to do a good foundation, uh, what is necessary for that, building a structure. And especially if I said, I don't want it just a ranch. I don't want just one floor. I want a multi. Research that. You would discuss it with other good builders. You would uh, take time to learn to be able to build the house right. I want a family that's multi-story. I want a many-generation Christian family. That's my longing. And um, Bible of a multi-generation family for the Lord. Think of one person, and then you could probably go two different directions from there sometimes. Quickly. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and, and Abraham's father moved with them at first. And then you had, beyond Jacob, you had um, uh, Joseph, Ephraim, Manasseh, and, and who knows how many. Who, who else? Quickly. All right, we have Levi. All right, going back uh, both directions. We have um, Timothy. Uh, we have others. We could go on and on. There's who's some modern examples uh, more modern history uh, examples. Can anyone think of any quickly? Some that come to mind real quickly. I think of Hudson Taylor. Many generations, still missionaries in China, descendants from J James Hudson Taylor I. Um, and the, James Hudson Taylor I was saved under the ministry or because of the preaching of John Wesley. So it goes back that far and they're still being missionaries. Um, another one would have been um, Murray. Pardon me? Jonathan Edwards, many generations. Andrew Murray, many generations. The one who writes the books on prayer was several generations down. There are several more generations that still go on in, in South Africa, as I understand. So it's, it's God's best. Um, and that's what we're shooting for. So if we were going to build a house, it's building temples for the Holy Spirit to dwell in. And he is dwelling through the passing of time. Multi-generational. So should we not discuss with other builders? Should we not discuss how we want it, how would be a good way to do it? What are some good tips? What did you, what would you, what do you wish you could change? What would you continue doing? What should I, what should, I would be talking to people and I do talk to people. What do I need to change to do better? Um, so moving on, salvation, I want to say this, prerequisite to anything, if we're going to build temples for the Holy Spirit to dwell in, the prerequisite is, minimum, is that we are children of God ourselves. How can I build a temple for the Holy Spirit to dwell in unless I be saved, filled with His Spirit? And um, God is merciful. God is merciful. He takes people right out of the rough. Praise the Lord. And God is the one who makes them temples fit to dwell in. But we do, as parents, have our part. Starting very young. Starting before they're ever born, we pray. And we um, ask God's will to be done. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to quickly move on because we... I'm going to be skipping over some stuff, all right? So we'll, let's just go uh, several points. Some biblical tips for raising a holy family. The tip, first tip is a wonderful, first tip is a wonderful but little understood influence that we can make a veil of. Parent, somehow your hidden life influences your family. That's our secret desires, our hidden life. I will pour waters on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. I will pour my spirit upon your children. Whose children? Those who have the, the hidden longing of their heart for God and also he says one shall say and promises it says they shall spring up, spring up as among the grass as willows by the water courses our neighbor has a willow tree that was cut down and they said to clean up because there's a bunch of little shoots coming up so I thought they wanted one left I misunderstood left them all with my chainsaw but I cut them all but with my chainsaw but just one little sprig already in two months that sprig is about that thick and it's above my head it springs up. Our children can spring up as willows among the water course. It's beside a little stream. And he says, one of your children will say, I am the Lord's. And call himself by the name of Jacob. Jacob. Another shall subscribe with his hand to the Lord. And surname himself by the name of Israel. Why? Because of a hidden desire, a thirst for God. 
Malachi, that's God's thirst as well. That's God's desire. Malachi tells us in chapter 2, 4, that God is searching for a godly seed. And he's given us a responsibility to help form them to be living stones um, for him to dwell in. God wants our children to turn out and serve him. Remember, God wants your children to be his children too. So he is on our side helping us to make this happen. But we have to stay involved. When they are little, you can more easily make them do the right things. That There is a wonderful grace on little children to make them admire us. The other day, our little Abigail, seven years old, was shocked when she heard Philip say that he didn't know the answer to a question. She exclaimed, but Daddy, I thought you knew everything. But once our children reach 12 or so and are older, they begin to think strongly for themselves, and we have to work harder to earn their admir admiration. We first noticed this with Kimberly when she was just a little girl. A few neighbor kids came over to play with her in our yard. But when we called her into lunch, suddenly we as her parents were no longer cool to her. None of our jokes were funny, and so we realized quickly that we needed to change those influences. Good times together is an influence and relationship builder. I think that my children should spend the first years of their lives spending more time with me than with others. So that is the second influence. We've talked about our hidden desires, the first influence. The second influence is other influence that we have to watch. And we, this can happen not just with our little children, but it can happen with older children as well. It's just not so noticeable at first that they're being influenced. But it can be dangerous if it's the wrong kind of influence. Because uh, Rob, uh, Proverbs 13, verse 30, I believe it is, says, Proverbs 13, 20, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. That's a promise, or it's a statement of fact, and referring to influences, good and bad. So this is, now I'm not going to get into public schooling versus charter schooling versus Christian schooling versus uh, homeschooling. But because of this point right here, we have chosen to homeschool because I want to be and I want my wife to be the greatest influence in my uh, children's lives at this point in the life. Um, <clears throat> now, and I thank God that my parents put me in a Christian school. I thank God they, they worked hard to do that. <clears throat> and because of that, I was able to have other influences around me that were very positive in my life. Um, we as American parents often hurry to get our children out of the home and become independent. And that's wonderful. Independence, a child being able to support, uh, grow up and be able to support a man, be able to support his wife and children is wonderful. But I say um, keep the child a little longer sometimes. If it's, you, God will lead you. For instance, <clears throat> I love working with um, gardening and fruit trees. And I plant a lot of fruit trees in my short life. Well, not as many as many, uh, many people, but I've, a lot for me. Um, I just like to plant fruit trees. I think someday someone's going to enjoy this fruit tree. But I've noticed that if I could keep the fruit tree a little longer at the nursery and a little less, uh, and get a little later in my yard, it will do better. For some reason, the nursery just does a little better. Especially when a lot of the trees I planted were in Phoenix, Arizona. It was a struggle to keep them going to Phoenix in the desert. <clears throat> so that's why I say, um, may God give us wisdom on how to let go, when to let go, uh, to be able to influence them in the most uh, positive way. And we got to be careful about have, make, turning our children into premature, and let me just use this phrase, I don't know of a better phrase, a better word, premature missionaries. I know parents have said, I'm going to send them out, there'll be missionaries out there. And they just send them out to to flounder and to get entrapped and their philosophy destroyed. And I've seen many children lost because they were sent out to become missionaries before it was time. Now our children are missionaries, we're missionaries, but they're, under our, uh, they're, they're in our home, all right? We work as a home unit. Influencer might be, must be emphasized. People they watch, friends, social media friends, passages. Um, passages to guide us here is um, 2 Samuel 13:3 whoever had a friend, but Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very subtle man. Yes. Subtle influences works, works both ways. Friends also tell us which direction our children 
are leaning since birds of a flock, birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> yeah, that could tell us you something about your child. Who's your child liking to hang with? Um, mm -hmm. That could be a warning sign for you to know what to watch for. It's not always their fault. This type of influence that we could watch is in Exodus 23:13, plan that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. I sometimes have grieved when I see some of the people that young people are following on social media. I think I know their future end result. I could see because I see they're following that person, following them. I know it's just, the, just this, but there's the, I see it over and over again. And <clears throat> in regard to technology with this application of this, no wicked thing before my eyes. In the very beginning of our marriage, we've had to fight to keep something that we've decided it was going to be a rule for us. I hope you don't throw me out, all right? I don't know what you think, but I'm going to just share it out so you could think, all right? This isn't even in my notes, so maybe I should stick with my notes. That is, we decided if there's any video we're going to watch as a family, it needs to fall into certain categories. If, it, if we can't classify underneath that category as pure and beautiful and wonderful and, and nice as it is, we're not going to watch it in our home. Um, <clears throat> And so we've tried to do that. Is it, is it calling me toward Christ? Is it truly, if you need to, and win their heart? Now, I don't mean by letting wrong slides spoil them and, and just being mamby pamby trying to be a chum, uh, but delighting in them, uh, enjoying them, uh, spending time with them, setting aside things that you like to put priority on them, um, and then being faithful to them in, in, in um, positive ways, proactive Look at yourself honestly. All right, I, have to, I wrote this for, I write this for me. Am I a delight to be around? Do I rarely smile at my children? Am I critical, grouchy, morose, of a sour temper, severe, sullen, austere, touchy, distant, uncaring? Everyone loves to be around those who are a delight to be around. All right, including your own children. All right. So if my children don't delight to be around me, I've got to t look through a checklist in my life. Um, so if you don't love your child with all of your heart, you know, in, a, in the right way, the biblical way, then ask God, God, you see that my child annoys me. You see my child is getting on my every last nerve and I don't want him around or I don't want her around. If that is your feelings, you could ask God. God is the giver of love. God is love. Say, you could say, God, I need to love my child more. And ask him to begin to work in your heart that only he could do. And then he'll give you patience. He'll give you whatever you need for that. If you want to have delight some teenagers, then start winning the hearts of your children when they're little, when they're just tiny. And they'll listen to you later if you're listening to them, to them now. I want to read the secular song written by a dad called Cats in the Cradle. My child arrived just the other day, came to the world in the usual way. But there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away. He was ta talking before I knew it, and as he grew, he'd say, I'm going to be like you, Dad. You know I'm going to be like you. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon, little boy blue and the man in the moon. When you coming home, Dad, I don't know when. Are wonderful and delightful, but sometimes it's not comfortable to work to have our children's hearts. Men, I know that you and I have ambitions in life. I have, an, I have ambitions. At different times, I've evaluated them and said, God, I'm going to lay aside this ambition to seek after a greater ambition to have children that will follow you. <clears throat> Amen. We have two more minutes? I don't know. All right, all right. So the scripture, God wants us to do this. God wants us to turn our hearts to him, to our ch turn our hearts to our children. Luke chapter 1, verse 17 and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. We got to be close to be able to prepare them for, for, for a people for the Lord. Um, I saw this happen one time when there was a, a man, at a, a maintenance man at a Bible school. His high school son began to hang out with young people who were going, getting in trouble, doing illegal activities. And, he, and the young man started going the wrong direction. This dad told his son that he was grounded for six months. But that those six months he would spend the time with him. Meet his whole, whole family today in a holiness church. That's a true story. And it happened because the father 
decided to have the heart of his son and fight for it. <clears throat> it's not too late. Father and mother, your heart has to turn to your children. And if you're a praying person, if you say, well, it looks like it's too late, it's not too late. Where there's life, it's not too late. The Holy Spirit is faithful. The Holy Spirit is faithful. I, would ju I just picked up a used book recently by Anna Talbot McPherson. I'm looking forward to reading it. It said, praying parents, take heart. Praying parents, take heart. We need you. Oh, Lord, we thank you for all these wonderful children. We thank you for all the wonderful youth here as well. We thank you for men and women here as well. Oh, God, we ask that you would give us a passion for you and a love for those who you give us, we pray and a passion for them to know you. And Lord, a yearning and a, and a hungry for them to know you, we pray. Lord, may we be able to do our part. And Lord, we ask that you would do, do your part. And then we also pray for each one of these children and young people. And then those who may have children yet out of the ark of safety, we pray for them right now. We thank you for your faithfulness to them, Lord, and for your, the powerful influence of your spirit. And we ask that you would work on these young people, we pray, and these children. For thy glory, we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.